Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to approach PBL learning at medical school. So PBL learning is an acronym for problem based learning and it's growing in increasing popularity across all UK medical schools. So let's get started. So just to bit about the Medicine Guide, the Medicine Guide is a YouTube channel with free online videos aiming to support medical students all throughout their journey at medical school. So I've got videos on supporting students during their preclinical and clinical years. I've got videos supporting students to help understand the high yield paediatric topics that crop up in medical school final exams, the high yield obs and gynae topics that crop up in medical school final exams, the high yield cardiology topics that crop up in medical school final exams, the high yield imaging that crops up in final exams. And this video in conjunction with others helps to support prospective medical students in tackling anatomy, in tackling CBL learning, histology sessions, and also PBL learning. So without much further ado, let's get started. So the outline of today's video is to look at which medical schools in the UK offers a PBL course, what is PBL teaching, and I've got an example PBL case that we can work through today, and I'll be offering top tips on how to approach a PBL course. So firstly, which medical schools offer a PBL course? So this is from the BMA's website, so officially as it stands in 2020, the following medical schools offers a PBL course. So that involves Liverpool, Manchester, Glasgow, Queen Mary's, Peninsula, Sheffield, Keel, Hull, York, Barts and East Anglia. So now let's look at PBL teaching. So PBL teaching, from my own experience, involves a group of 12 students, sometimes more, sometimes less. It really depends on your medical school who meet every week to open up a PBL case. So this group will also be supervised by a PBL tutor. So if you're in your pre-clinical years, it's very likely that your PBL tutor will be one of the lecturers that you have on your course. If you're in the clinical years, it might your PBL tutor might potentially be one of the doctors that uh, you might see during your ward placements or clinics you might attend during your rotation. And as part of PBL learning, it's very much self-directed learning. So each week, two different members of the team will volunteer to act as a chair and a scribe. So the chair is a member of the team who will help to uh, lead group discussions, they will encourage members of the team to discuss particular topics, they will ensure that the group stays on task. Also there will be another member of the team who acts as scribe, so this person will have to document the key themes, the key ideas that the group has discussed and record on, onto the whiteboard for instance. And the scribe will also have the ultimate responsibility for writing down the key learning objectives that the group that the group has identified and the scribe will have to document this on the whiteboard and then potentially other members of the team can just take pictures or potentially the scribe will have to upload it straight onto an online platform that the university uses it really varies on what medical school you go to but essentially the scribe has to document the learning objectives in such a manner that everybody in the group is aware of what those learning objectives are because those learning objectives are really going to be your bench work for all of your reading and note taking that you'll be doing over the course of the following week. So the PBL tutor in PBL learning is really there to supervise and facilitate the discussion so it will be the group that will be discussing the case identifying the key aspects of the case identifying the key learning objectives and under the guidance of the PBL tutor they'll be coming up with a list of learning objectives that they will go away and research over the next week and meet up on the following session to 
review all of their learning and to clarify if they've missed anything and if they have they have to go away and read up on that so really pbr learning is just an opportunity for you to meet with your group and the pbr tutor to read through the case identify the key aspects of the case identify the key learning objectives that you need to go away and research and that really is the key concept of pbr learning it's very much independent learning is very much self-directed okay so this is just a general description of what your week might look like if you are on a pbl course so on monday you open a pbl case with your pbl tutor and the pbl group like i said you discuss the key elements of this case and you look at your key topics for this particular week you identify key learning objectives for this week that you will go away and research and then over the course of the next few days, you will probably have lectures, seminars, lab sessions, anatomy sessions, histology sessions, communication skills sessions to help supplement your learning uh, and to help supplement the topics that you're expected to cover in your PBL. And on Friday, now this might vary on what medical school you go to, but my medical school we used to close the PBL cases on the Friday. So you meet up with your PBL tutor and your PBL group, and it's more of a plenary session. So different members of the group will present their notes. Um, so it might take the, the format of a formal presentation, or it might just be a discussion across the table. It really does vary on what your group decides. And essentially you're reviewing the key elements of the case, you're reviewing your learning objectives that you've completed, and you're presenting the answers to the learning objectives. So for instance, if you had a learning objective where you were focusing on the anatomy of the heart, then perhaps one to two members of the group will be refreshing people and just giving them uh, a quick whistle stop tour about the anatomy of the heart and on the Friday usually after your PBL session there'll be a wrap-up lecture and this wrap-up lecture will really pull together the key elements of the case and the topics that you've come across over the past week and the wrap-up lecture aims to give you an outline of the key ideas the key concepts that you should have read upon during this week. If there's anything that you want to clarify about this week you weren't unsure of, then the best place to do that is probably initially with your PBL group during your wrap-up closing session. So that's your Friday session. So clarify anything that you were unsure of. Um, and if you didn't get any answers from there, then the next point of call will probably be to discuss it with the lecturer who's leading the wrap-up lecture. Okay. So top tips in approaching a PBL course. So prior to the PBL session, you might have access to the PBL case. And if you do, then please read the case. Please try to familiarise yourself with the case and think about what would be the potential learning objectives that you would need to cover this week. But if you don't have access to the PBL case, sometimes if you have a look at your timetable for the forthcoming week, it might give you an indication of what that case could be. So if you have a lot of lab sessions or anatomy sessions and histology sessions over this particular week, which is all to do with focusing on heart, then it's very likely that over the next few days, you will be expected to learn about heart physiology, heart anatomy, because it's very likely that you will have a, a cardiology related PBL case this week. And I would also suggest that you review some basic anatomy and physiology prior to your PBL session, just because it will put you in a better position. So in PBL, when you're talking about the anatomy or the underlying physiology related to the particular case, if you've read up on it, you'll come across as better read. And also you'll be able to engage more actively in the discussion. And that's something that you want to do because at the end of every semester, definitely at my university, your PBL tutor will be giving you constructive criticism 
on what they think you did well and, and other things that they think you could improve on in terms of being a good PBL team member. So the more active you are, the more engaged you are, the more involved you are in your PBL group, and that will help to make a better impression of yourself to others. And also it helps you to reinforce your own learning because if you're taking the time out to teach someone else a topic, then you need to have a fairly good understanding of that topic beforehand. So it's really a two-way winning streak. And during the PBL session, so highlight any key phrases from the case that you've been given that you're unsure of and then discuss this with your group because if you're unsure of what this particular term means then it's very likely that other people will be unfamiliar too so it's best that you bring it up and I'm sure that someone else in your group of 12 or however many other students you have in your group will be familiar with that phrase if not then potentially even the PBL tutor could step in and clarify that for you. And I know I've mentioned this previously, but if there's anything that other people in your group are unsure of too, that it's important that you try to help them out because not only does it help to reinforce your own learning when you're teaching other people, but also it will help to make a good impression of yourself amongst your peers and also your PBL tutor. And finally, be an active member in terms of discussion. So when your group is trying to think of key learning objectives for that week, then be an active member and really get involved in that conversation. OK. Now, I've got an example of a PBL case here. So what we'll do is I will give you 10 seconds to read through the three paragraphs or you can pause the screen and we'll discuss how you would approach the PBL case as a first year medical student. So I'll give you 10 seconds from now. Okay, so that's the end of the 10 seconds. So like I said, in PBL, you're really trying to discuss the key trigger points from this case which you're going to use to come up with your learning objectives for this week and to really guide your learning over the next few days. So let's make a start. So as a first year medical student, we were told at university to focus on the normal. So any hinder or, sorry, any sort of trigger relating to pathology or anything abnormal, any diseases, we were told to just park that to one side and focus on the normal anatomy and the normal physiology, just for our first year of medicine. So with that in mind, one of the points that I would circle or highlight with my pen in PBL would be the following. So in this scenario, we've got the fact that this patient is suffering from breathing problems and in my mind that would trigger the light bulb in my brain and make me think that for this week I need to make sure that I understand the normal physiology surrounding ventilation. Also it would make me consider that I need to go away and read up and understand the normal anatomy of the respiratory tract and furthermore understand the histology of the respiratory tract and exact and understand exactly how it's related to adapt to meet its structure and function. Now, one point that I would circle is the fact that she has asthma. Now, as a first year medical student, it's important that you focus on the normal. So instead of reading the phrase asthma and going away and researching about asthma, as a first year medical student, what I would read up on instead is immunology. So the reason that the medical school might have chose an asthma case as a f for their first years isn't for them to go away and read up on asthma, but for them to become familiar with the topic of immunology. So going away and reading up on inflammation, the innate immune response, the adaptive immune response is something that would be more beneficial to you as a first year. And it's very likely that you will have lectures 
over the following week focusing on immunology. So that's something that I would focus on. And also the fact that this patient is using a brown inhaler and that very vague description is hinting to pharmacology. So you might have to go away and read up on drug classes and indications of different types of asthmatic inhalers, looking at their mechanism of action and looking at their side effects, okay? And it mentions here that despite the fact that the patient has asthma, she sometimes smokes. So that would be the trigger in my mind to cover some psychosocial concepts. So again, you would be guided by the lectures that you're having on psychosocial topics over the forthcoming week. So the lecture might involve risky behaviours, patient adherence compliance, the impact of a chronic illness like asthma on the patient and their family. So when it comes to psychosocial, I would try to focus on what the lecture of that week is and try to guide the psychosocial learning objective based on what your lecture for that week is covering. OK, so that's how you would approach it as a first year medical student. So this is the exact same case as the previous slide, but the way that you would approach PBL as a second year medical student and the sort of learning objectives that you would draw upon would be very different. So I'll give you five seconds just to refresh yourself with the case and also think about what sort of learning objectives you would draw upon this case if you were a second year. Okay, so let's talk about this case in a bit more detail. So as a second year medical student, you've already learned about the normal physiology, the normal anatomy. So as a second year, you just want to review it and refresh yourself. Again, you just want to refresh yourself on the normal anatomy of the respiratory tract. But as a second year, the step up would be for you to understand the, how the normal anatomy of a normal patient would compare to that of a patient who has a pathological condition. So in this case, understand how the normal anatomy would vary in a healthy patient compared to an asthmatic patient. And because you're in second year, you're transitioning now and you're preparing yourself for when you begin third year and when you're in the clinical environment. So now you want to start developing some of your clinical skills. In this case, those clinical skills would take the fashion of understanding how to take a good respiratory history and also understanding how to begin performing a good respiratory examination. Now, I would say that it's a pretty good chance that you will either have to perform some sort of respiratory examination or some element of the respiratory history taking in your clinical OSCE in your second year. So just be aware of that and just be cautious of that. Also understanding how the histology of the normal respiratory tract would differ to that in an asthmatic patient now because you're in second year. And previously when you were in first year, asthma would have been the trigger point for you to refresh yourself on immunology considering inflammation, the innate immune response and the adaptive immune response. But now you're a second year, you need to consider the more pathological basis now of diseases and as your step up in your second year you would more likely need to focus on hypersensitivity reactions in addition to general immunology and similarly again pharmacology is something that you'll constantly revisit throughout your entire time in medical school in second year you'll be focusing more so on contraindications and drug interactions that's your next step up and particularly with drug interactions, you need to understand which drug combinations you should never ever give together and why that's the case. So methotrexate and trimethoprim should never ever be co-prescribed because that can lead to fatal pancytopenia. And that's something that you really need to begin to appreciate and understand as a second year medical student. And similarly again, just reviewing the psychosociology just so that you're more comfortable with it. And finally, the key aspect to this case is that you have a patient presenting with asthma and second year is focusing more on pathology in most medical schools. So the focus of this week's case, in addition to everything else that I've mentioned, 
will also be to understand the pathology underlying asthma, understanding the signs and symptoms of a patient presenting with asthma, looking at the test investigations that are needed to be performed in this patient and coming up with plans of how to treat a patient with asthma. So this is an example of how you would approach a PBL case as a second year medical student and hopefully you can appreciate that this is quite a big step up from first year and hopefully this will help to ease your transition from first year to second year a little bit easier. So just to rough outline, so on the Monday you've opened the PBL case and then Monday to Friday you've had teaching sessions to help reinforce your learning and to help you answer some of the learning objectives that your group set on Monday. And on Friday, after you have answered all of your learning objectives, you'll meet again with your group and you'll be discussing the findings from your research and hopefully teaching other members of your group. And if there's anything that you're unsure of, I would strongly suggest that you speak to members of your group during your PBL session and clarify that. If you're still unsure, then the best place to clarify that would be during your wrap-up lecture, so potentially speak to the lecturer who's going to be delivering the wrap-up lecture at the end if your question was answered during the wrap-up lecture. So after closing your PBL case, so this is the Friday, I think it's important that you reflect on what your group members discussed. So did they mention something that you perhaps didn't come across on during your reading? If that's the case, then please spend the weekend uh, just refreshing yourself, making sure that you've covered everything. And also I think it's important that you cross-reference the discussion that you had with your group with your friends. So see if they've discussed something in their group in greater detail than your group did, see if, if they've discussed something that potentially your group might have missed out on, and just make sure that you've tried to cover everything that you can in your notes. And over the weekend, I think it's important that you consolidate this week's learning, so go back over anything that you were unsure of that you didn't quite understand, and really try to understand it the best way that you can because on Monday it's likely that you'll have a case which builds up upon the previous week's learning so it's just a way of making sure that you hit the ground running on Monday morning. So thank you very much for watching my video today hopefully you found it useful please can I ask you to like my video subscribe to my youtube channel and share this video with your friends and I wish you all the best for your exams.